Secondary growth in plants is growth that increases the diameter of a stem, a trunk, or a branch of a perennial plant. So those plants that live year after year after year, uh, namely trees and shrubs, are going to display this type of growth. Secondary growth is not something we see in annual plants, and it is not something we see on uh, many of the monocots, because uh, most monocots are going to be showing growth that is limited to the confines of only one year. So let's explore what happens when a plant increases the diameter of its stems, branches, and the trunk of a tree. Secondary growth is going to be accomplished by a type of uh, uh, meristem tissue. Actually, there's going to be two types of uh, meristems that are going to be responsible for secondary growth. One is called the vascular cambium, which produces more uh, vascular tissue, xylem and phloem. And there's also going to be cork cambium, which is responsible for producing the layers of the periderm, the outermost part of a branch, a stem, or a trunk, what people usually call uh, the bark. But in reality, uh, that is not a precise term. So I'm going to be telling you how to distinguish one from the other uh, in, in just a few minutes here. So let's think about the secondary growth. Secondary growth that is uh, going to be produced by the vascular cambium will be producing secondary xylem and secondary phloem. Why are we calling this secondary? Well, the answer is simple. We are talking about secondary growth. Primary growth, if you may recall, was the growth a plant did when it increased in height as it grew vertically. And so there we had the apical meristems and those produce primary phloem and primary xylem. But now that the plant is older than a year and the branches begin to increase in diameter, more phloem and more xylem will be produced. And that's what we call secondary phloem and secondary xylem. Again, the tissue responsible for this is going to be the vascular cambium. Let's take a look at the illustrations that are provided here. Here you can see vascular cambium illustrated as a ring, as a, just a, a single thin line. But in reality, it's going to be more like a cylinder. It is only one layer of cells in terms of thickness. I'm talking about the cambium right now. And it's going to uh, be found throughout the length of a stem or the trunk of a tree. This vascular cambium is going to consist of cells that, like stem cells, are going to be responsible for producing more stem cells, but also is going to be responsible for producing uh, the secondary xylem and phloem. Take a look at one of the hypotheses of how this cambium can lead to secondary growth. Now I'm going to use my magnifying lens function over here. So, so look at the vascular cambium here represented as a thin red line. Remember that this is going to be representing a single layer of cells. Each cell has the letter C. And the letter C here is just for cambium. So here we have one cell, another cell, another cell. And what I just mentioned is that these cells are going to be like stem cells, capable of producing other cells in the structure of the plant. And so, like I said, these cells can make more of the stem cells, or they can engage in a process of making secondary xylem and secondary phloem. So let's take a look at just one of these cells. This cell will engage in the process of mitosis. Remember that mitosis produces two daughter cells, and here they are. One of the two daughter cells produced is going to be another cambium cell, and the other one's going to be a cell that is going to be part of the sec secondary xylem. And so that's why we put the X here. The X is for xylem. Now, this cambium cell will eventually, in time, divide again. And the next time it divides, one of the two cells it produces is another one of those vascular cambium cells, another one of the stem cells. But this time it may end up producing a secondary phloem cell. 
This way, when a cambium cell divides, will be sometimes producing additional xylem, and sometimes it will be producing additional phloem. Now, we really don't see what we have in this illustration, what is like a one-to-one, -one, one xylem is followed by one phloem, and next we have one xylem and one phloem. Uh, in reality, what happens during secondary growth is that more xylem is going to be produced in relationship to phloem. Now let's take a look at what happens after a year's worth of growth. There's going to be a layer of secondary xylem and there's going to be a layer of secondary phloem. These cells of the secondary xylem are going to be pushed towards the inside and uh, the secondary phloem is going to be grown towards the outside where the periderm of the plant is going to be. What happens to the secondary xylem is that it's going to continue to accumulate year after year after year. Here, you see a cross section of a branch. And in this cross section, you can see the rings of growth. Uh, let's presume for a moment that each one of these rings of growth corresponds to one year's worth of growth. So here we have uh, one year, here we have another year, here we have another year. All of this that is accumulating uh, at the core part of the plant, we also, also call this heartwood. What is accumulating here as heartwood is going to be the secondary xylem. What happened to the secondary phloem? Remember, the secondary phloem is growing away from the center of the plant towards the periderm. And here what happens to these secondary phloem cells is that they are eventually pushed, compressed, and they will be sloughed off. Sloughed off is the same process that happens with your skin. So when you look at your skin cells, like covering your hand, covering your arms, that is going to be cells produced by a tissue known as stratified squamous epithelium. New cells are being made underneath all their cell, layers of cells, which are on the outside, and those older cells are dead, but they're still providing the protection your skin needs. And what happens to that outermost layer of cells in your skin is that they're constantly flaking off, but flaking off doesn't sound like too nice, and so we say they're being sloughed off. And the same thing is going to be happening to cells of the secondary phloem. Uh, they eventually reach the periderm, and they're going to be sloughed off. They are not going to be accumulating as much as the cells of the secondary xylem are going to be. So next time you happen to see a cross section of a tree, maybe a tree was cut and you can see into that cutting, the rings you see there of growth, that's going to be mostly secondary xylem uh, that has been accumulated year after year after year during the time the tree was growing. Another interesting detail that we may appreciate from this illustration is that in temperate regions like here in the Pacific Northwest, this secondary xylem is going to remember, it's gonna be remaining as wood, and so we can have early wood, the wood that forms early in the spring when there's an abundance of water in the soil. See, when there's a lot of water, plants like trees can take advantage of that and produce larger vessel elements that's going to be the larger in diameter uh, cells that are transporting water in the xylem because the water is there. And so let's move it over to the leaves where greater photosynthetic rates can be achieved. As the year progresses and the weather gets drier and also the soil doesn't have as much water, the diameter of those vessel elements and the tracheides we see over here is not going to be as great. As great. And so usually what you see here is in a year's worth of growth, closer to the core, the center of the tree, you're going to see the early wood and away from the middle of the tree, there's going to be this uh, uh, late wood. Uh, so here we have again, early wood, late wood. Here we have early wood, late wood. And so that late wood is going to be characterized by this smaller, finer uh, nature of the vessel elements that are part of the xylem. Now, as a tree continues to grow, there is going to be older layers that are going to be accumulating only in the form of xylem, 
and uh, there's going to be the secondary phloem that will eventually be disappearing. Only the outermost layer is going to be responsible for transporting materials. Only the outermost layer of secondary xylem and the outermost layer of secondary phloem will be capable of, be trans of transporting materials within the plant. These other cells that are part of the hardwood are not functioning anymore. They are not going to be transporting water anymore. And uh, that's the reason you might have seen a tree where like the middle of the tree is hollow. Uh, sometimes this happens as an injury because a lightning strikes a tree. It doesn't necessarily have to kill a tree. Or maybe there was a disease or a fire destroying the inner part of the bottom, the trunk of a tree. But if the outer uh, perimeter of the tree is still alive, that is going to be where sap is going to be flowing. And so we have xylem sap and, and, and flowing sap. Those uh, forms of sap are transported only in the outermost secondary phloem and secondary xylem. And so this outermost part of the tree is going to be known as sap wood, and this is going to be known as heart wood. Remember that the older uh, secondary phloem is going to be sloughed off and it's not going to be accumulating. Then the last part of secondary growth that can be seen in stems, branches, the trunks of trees, is going to be responsible uh, by the cork cambium. And the cork cambium is going to be giving rise to two types of uh, cells. One is going to be the phelloderm, which forms just inside of the cork cambium, and then the remaining of the cells are going to be cork cells. These cork cells are going to be accumulating a waxy material called suberin. Suberin, and here you see the name on this slide, this waxy suberin is going to be making the outer part of the tree waterproof. And that is important because it's going to be helping protect the tree from losing water through the trunks and the stems. Additionally, these cells that are packing that waxy suberin are going to be compacted and that provides protection also against external mechanical damage, like an object striking the tree, or even uh, pests like insects that may uh, do harm to the tree by attacking the outer part. Those attacks usually uh, may be uh, avoided by the protective nature of the cork. And so what we call cork in reality is going to be the uh, periderm. So the periderm is going to include the cork cambium and the cork themselves. What people call bark on everyday life, the outer parts of the tree that, in, like I imagine a trunk and you're removing the pieces, what people call uh, bark is actually the cork. And so this is where the confusion is. From a botany, the study of plants point of view, bark is going to include both the periderm and also the layer of the secondary phloem. And here I have another uh, illustration that can help you with it. So look at what we call in uh, botany from a botanical point of view, bark is going to include all of that secondary phloem and it's going to be the layers of the periderm, which includes the cork cambium and the cork layer as well. So both of these, secondary phloem, periderm, from a botanical point of view, that's the bark. So it encompasses more. And so what people call bark, remember, that's just everyday language. It's usually just this paradigm. If you find this you know, confusing, just, just refer to this right here, what we call bark. It's going to be phloem, secondary phloem, and periderm. And I think that, uh, oh, there's one more detail. Hold on. <laughs> one more detail I want to tell you. So these cells over here, <coughs> I'm sorry for that. Uh, the cells of the secondary phloem, which I'm pointing at here, just underneath uh, the bark, are going to be also in need of oxygen. So if we have this outermost layer, which is going to be cells that are compacted and with a lot of suberin, uh, that will, will be limiting the amount of oxygen that can go through the outer covering of the tree. So in order to provide oxygen to those cells, there are going to be lenticels. And these lenticels can be seen as little uh, bumps on the tree, and there's going to be like very tiny pores that we are, will be allowing for air 
uh, gas, oxygen, combined with other gases that are part of the atmosphere, moving in through those openings, through those holes, and reaching the layers of cells that will be needing that oxygen. So lenticels are going to be structures located in the bark of the tree that will be allowing for gas exchange. And I think that is all that I have to share with regards to secondary growth. Now um, I will be producing one more video, I think, that deals with uh, more details about plant structure, leaves, and stems we haven't had a chance to cover yet.